three, two, one. You ready? You're listening to the Real Pineapple Podcast Network. Thank you so much for listening. This is The Real Pineapple. This is your humble host, Hunter, here. I hope you're all having a great start to your week so far. Uh, So I wasn't going to record, but I was like, you know, this drops, so let's get into it. So I have my thoughts on Bel Air, which is the, as IMDb says, a dramatic retelling of the story of the Fresh Prince of Bel Air. And it's going to go ahead and star a newcomer, like a true newcomer. He has not had a credited accredited acting uh, film or TV or film role. Uh, Jabari Bl- uh, Banks, who plays Will, uh, who is also from Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Go figure. So here's the thing about this. So I saw this trailer this morning because it was trending on Twitter. And my morning tradition around 9, 10 a.m. is to see what's going on on social media. Uh, I'm trying to make a very conscious effort. Actually, everyone, try to go ahead and stay off social media till like 8 or 9 a.m. So you've had your coffee, you can digest the potential bullshit that you're going to see. But I digress. So I go on my Twitter and I see that Bel Air is trending. So I look, I watch the trailer and... Here's what I'm going to say about this. About this, I've seen a lot of people defending this trailer, like, "Whoa, it looks like the old, the, it looks like the OC," and "Oh, it looks like this," and "Oh, that's so cool." <sighs> Here's the thing: this trailer comes across so much to me, like we're trying to be Euphoria. It comes across so much like that to me, as far as we need to be that edgy, you know, black drama. It, it's it's Euphoria Empire, essentially, is what I think they're kind of going for. And one of the big things that people give Disney so much shit for, sometimes rightfully so, is just the horish level of, oh man, we need to go ahead and remake, you know, this animated film in live action. And for this, there, when I think about all of the, the people, and I and I, I know I always bring this up, uh, but when I think about the amount of pe- kids in film school right now who are <laughs> who are working on, I have friends who are constantly working on scripts, fine-tuning, adjusting so they can go ahead and pitch it. When you think about all the original scripts that are floating out there right now, millions of you know, refined, you know, blood, sweat, and tears put into them, and you see that they're doing a remake of The Fresh Prince of Bel-Air in 2021 from a show that ran, you know, from 90 to 96. I just... Okay. Sorry. I have have a decent amount to say here. So, as far as the original film that came out in 2019, one of the things that I actually enjoyed uh, uh, about that you know, credit words do, is that while it was a, quote, dramatic retelling, A, the thing was only, you know, four minutes, and two, you did at least feel like the show had, or, or the, the film had some of the, the lighter spirit elements to it. Because in talking to uh, in to my uh, talking to my friend uh, Bradley, who's been on the show before, one of the things I was explaining to him is, look, when you have a show like this, especially, you know, it coming out in the 90s, early 90s, Will Smith was just starting to kind of become a thing. Of course, he had the whole, uh, you know, Fresh Prince, uh, you know, uh, tandem with DJ Jazzy Jeff. You know, he's DJ, I'm the rapper, first ever rap Grammy. But Will Smith hadn't taken or the Fresh Prince at that point, hadn't taken that next leap. And so the Fresh Prince of Bel-Air really was a showcase for Will Smith. And so, you know, you go ahead and you surround Will Smith, someone who's never, you know, acted before. You go ahead and you surround him with an incredible cast of veteran 
for the most part, actors and actresses. You know, you get James Avery to play Philip Banks. You get Alfonso Ribeiro. You get Tatiana Ali, even though she was young. You get, you know, Joseph Marcel to play Jeffrey. You get, you know, Karen Parsons to play Hillary. You like, you you know, and going down the line. So you go you go through this whole list and... For the new, uh, for the new show, admittedly, they do have some people who have, uh, who have some, uh, some, some experience. We, we've got, uh, Ollie, uh, uh, Sh- uh, Shulton, who plays Carlton in, in the reboot. Uh, you've seen him in a few things. Uh, he's actually on All-American, or he was on All-American, which I'm going to talk about here in a second. Um, but you got him, you've got, uh, Adrian Holmes, who's playing, uh, Philip Banks. He was in, uh, he was manual in uh, Elysium is probably what you know him from. Uh, you've got, uh, Cassandra Freeman, who I recognize from, uh, Inside Man, who played Sylvia, but she's also Patricia Wilson in Luke Cage, but she's playing the new Aunt Viv, and I'm, I'm really happy that, <laughs> hopefully they don't recast Aunt Viv, but, <laughs> but, uh, I'm really happy. I'm, I'm happy for her because you know with Luke Cage ending and all that. Um, we have someone who I have not heard of, uh, Simone Joy Jones, who plays this iteration of Lisa. Admittedly, I think it's a little weird we're getting Lisa in season one, but here we are. Uh, she's going to be on uh, this show called The Chair on Netflix, or that came out uh, a couple months ago on Netflix. Uh, which has uh, star Sandra O. Oh, so if you have, so she's on there, and then just to run out the cast real quick, Coco Jones plays Hillary Banks. Uh, you know her. I recognize her from uh, Vampires vs. the Bronx uh, last year, which she was pretty good in. But she was in that, and so she's playing the new. She's playing the new Hillary, and then we've got uh, who else am I missing here? Got uh, Jimmy uh, uh, Akingbola, who's playing Jeffrey. Uh, you recognize him from uh, probably Most Dangerous Game or In the Long Run. Uh, he was, uh, oh yeah, he was in uh, Ted Lasso. He was Ollie on Ted Lasso, so he's been in a few episodes of that. Um, yeah, so you got him, and then lastly you have uh, Jordan L. Jones, who's playing Jazz. You recognize him as, uh, I recognize him immediately uh, from uh, from Snowfall. He plays Bo on there, and then he was on uh, that show, Rel. Uh, Lowell's show uh, for the one season was on. So, and then the other last person uh, I'll bring up is uh, Akira Ak- uh, Akbar. She plays uh, Ashley, and she is uh, she was a uh, Monica Rambo in Captain Marvel, which I was like, oh, right on. So, all right, so got that out of the way. So. <sighs> I'm not saying that the show won't work. I will simply say that from the trailer I saw, um, I basically I was just hearing "Danger Will Robinson Danger" in my head <laughs> because this there are a lot there's a greater chance that this show is gonna just fucking suck and fail than there is for it to be a good show. And the reason I say that is because you're already taking something that so, has such a loyal, you know rabid fan base and you know launch will smith's career into being you know will smith and with this show even though i have no doubt whatsoever that uh that jabari banks i mean let's be real he's getting this shot from nowhere straight out theater school he has a chance to do what will smith did with this role and make it his own and use it as a springboard to go ahead and become you know you know to go ahead and elevate his brand and everything and so i i am never okay i won't say I, I never i rarely go ahead and root for people to fail i don't know this brother i mean it's his first chance i hope i hope he's great i above all else i hope he's great even if the material's not great or everyone else around him sucks because he's getting this first chance i genuinely hope that he knocks it out of the park i i i truly mean that my question is are the showrunners the people behind Peacock, are they going to go ahead and match uh, Jabari's passion? Because, you know, there are people involved in the show who, you know, you know they, they they care, but at the same time, like, you know, these are people who have, you know, worked, uh, worked before. So 
I mean, are they going to be just kind of lackadaisical and go, we can just let the brand carry this? I mean, I hope not, but maybe, like, maybe that's the case. Um, again, I, I hope that's not the case, but I I would be lying if I said I wasn't concerned about that. Um, I will say uh, some of the writers for the show, Chris Collins, who's gone ahead, uh, he was a writer on John Wick. Uh, chapter three is produced on Sons of Anarchy for four seasons. Uh, he produced uh, the 2018 season of Bane in the High Castle, which is a great fucking show. And he wrote for four, four seasons on The Wire. So, I mean, that's a, that's quite a great uh, that's quite a great uh, uh, pedigree there. So, I mean, it's not like there's just, a you know, it's not like there's hacks involved with this. It, like, it does have a cast, but... The thing about the Fresh Prince is that a it's a brand name and it's something that it's a show that people are so okay with it being what it is. I wish even if you call this Bel Air and you keep Will being the main character, I really think that what you could have done is gone ahead and recast, uh, just change the names up because what you do is when you go ahead and you have everything be quote the same as far as you know the fact that's still taking place in Bel Air, the fact that. You know, Will leaves because you know one one of those basketball. You know, on the, on the beat on the court where we spent most of my days. You know that whole thing is flushed out because you ha- you're introducing these new spins on elements, but you're keeping the overall elements the same. It doesn't allow for any separation between the original show and what you're presenting to me now. And so I can already hear people who are going to enjoy this go, that's not fair. You're comparing it to the original. And my retort would be, you're, the show's not really giving me an option not to, considering it's not changing anything. And I think for me, what I would have done, like, again, I don't think they should be making this. I think this is a bad idea. Let me just be crystal fucking clear. I think this is a bad idea that they're doing this. With that said, if you have to do this show, like if you absolutely have no wiggle room, you have to make this show regardless. This is why I would have done. I would have killed off Uncle Phil off screen. And I understand that some people are going to go, what the fuck? Here's why. Because if you have to go through this whole dra- uh, dramatic interpretation of, of Will being brought out to Bel Air, one of the things about the show, like, how do I put this? Will would always connect with Aunt Viv whenever Uncle Phil was around and he was about to get in trouble. But they rarely had, like, there was the one episode where, you know, she teaches their Black History class. But that atta- that relationship was only really there when it needed to be. Uh, Will and Uncle Phil have an incredible connection as the show goes on because, you know, Phil realizes how spoiled his kids are, even fucking Ashley, at, at, a, at several points. But Will's the one that he's really able to go ahead and, you know, teach responsibility and everything to. And so they have a connection in, in that in that way. I think if you have Will come out after this, you know, the whole gun fiasco and everything, if you have him move out to, uh, move out to Bel Air and you have Aunt Viv lose Uncle Phil, it's almost like a fish out of water story for both of them because not only is Will having to navigate, you know, being this new person in this new city, you know, in a prep school and all that, and Viv would have to be, you know, going through and establishing herself as a socialite, you know, in the community, is very similar to the original show without Uncle Phil. And so that's a way that their stories could parallel and that they could go ahead and relate to each other. I really wish that someone would have thrown that out there but i i I don't know y'all like watching the trailer and i'm re-watching here as uh uh as uh as i'm recording here i will say it's beautifully shot just like everything i'm seeing as far as the actual show like it it definitely looks pretty uh some of the shots of bel-air are genuinely beautiful but one thing that I will say for myself is the lack of color, and I'm not talking about the cast, but the lack of Will kind of being Will from what's showing at least so far is a little, like, I, and I understand it's the 90s too. I understand, you know, fashion was different, but Will almost seems subdued in this in this trailer. I, I don't know if they're hiding, you know, potentially more, you know, extravagant shit that Will does, but 
that's a little disappointing considering, you know, he talks about, you know, I, I rep with Philly wherever I go. I mean, do you? <laughs> like, it, I mean, I know you're wearing the Sixers jersey at a point, but it just kind of seems like Will's almost being, like, subtle. And that's not how Will is at all. Will's, you know, Will is loud and proud. It, it feels like he's almost more of a whimper uh, in, in this in this film and I, or in this show. And here's the other thing that I'm really worried about. This is already getting a guaranteed two season, uh, two seasons, uh, episode uh, or uh, not episode season one looks like it's six episodes. So I guess what I would say is that almost worries me that they're going to kind of go, well, we're playing with house money. We don't really, you know, we can, we only need to try so hard. That that's where I'm a little that's where I'm a little worried. Um, this premieres on Super Bowl Sunday, I believe it's the first uh, three episodes. I believe I read. Um, I'm gonna wait until the show comes out. I'm gonna wait till episode five hits, and then I'll watch them like all <laughs> probably in one day. But looking through the trailer, though, you know, it. it feels like someone really did go like all right let's make our own version of euphoria the sh- just even the way it's shot with some some of the neon shots um some some of the kind of like the photo realism it feels like at points as far as uh almost like it's like will's almost dreaming some of this shit uh it feels like they're kind of leaning more that way which again you know if they can make it work they can make it work but one of the things about the humor in the show, and this is what I was, uh, if I randomly got off my, my pace, I was talking to uh, my friend Bradley about, is when you have humor, you're able to go ahead and teach your audience in a different way. So, like, you can have a bad situation. So, okay, perfect example. So, there's that whole, uh, there's that whole episode, I think it's season two, where Will and Carlton are driving Uncle Phil's friends, uh, nice Bentley, I think, down to Los Angeles or to uh, San Diego or something, because they they flew or something like that on his jet, something like that. And Carlton and Will get stopped and they get put in jail. And so Uncle Phil and his friend have to, you know, go bail him out. And so you get, you know, some funny back and forth with Will and Carlton, you know, being in the jail with these prisoners and all that. But then, you know, the show hits you with that gut punch of, you know, they were pulled over because they were driving while black. And when you have humor, you're able to go ahead and almost kind of lull people into a false sense of security before you hit them with that, you know, that that realistic punch where you go, oh, shit, okay, this is what you're setting up. When you have everything being dramatic, you do, like, it's hard to go ahead sometimes and get your message across without a little, uh, you know, le- you know, a little humor, a little le- levity uh, for your audience. So I really wish this trailer would have shown off some of the humor because I'm assuming there will be jokes in this. I would hope, but it's one of those things where I went for this first trailer. I, I do wish they would have shown off some humor, and the fact there's none in here is a little alarming to me. Um, also, the other big thing that I just kind of went, oh, God, really? The fact that Will, you know, was involved with uh, having a gun on him. And it feels like they're going to have this whole thing about the guy that got hit with the basketball, the the gangbanger. It feels like they're going to go ahead and have that be a thread for the whole first season. So... I'm very curious how the show is going to in any way justify these, you know, admittedly probably broke ass brothers coming from Philly and getting the Bel Air and finding him. Cause you know, that's going to happen. Like I can, o- I would almost bet something that that's going to happen. And two, because this show apparently is TVMA, I wonder if they're actually going to be MA with it. Like, are they just going to have Will say, you know, fuck one time or, or, you know, oh, hell no, like, oh, fuck no, like, are they gonna have him do, you know, that shit, or is, you know, Hillary gonna, you know, <laughs> be involved in a gangbang or something, like, like, how TVMA are they actually gonna get, and 
I make that Hillary joke to say this. I think someone in the Banks clan who is a female is going to be assaulted by the end of the first season. And the only reason I say that is because, again, Euphoria, I think they're going to, I really believe that the people watching the, or who made this are going, yep, we need to match Euphoria. And I think that having something happen to one of the Banks women Actually, I'm. Uh, yeah, I could sit. I can just see them doing that for the shock value and going like, "Oh my gosh!" Like we're willing to go here. I'm worried. I, I'm genuinely worried about that. And I think I'm worried that they're gonna think that's so edgy, and that it fits into this new reboot. I, I'm. I'm very concerned about that. But last thing I'm gonna say about this. Uh, having Nas's one mic was a terrible decision for this trailer. It, the song doesn't go whatsoever. I, I don't know why they use the song. They 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 really should have used "If I Rule the World." That would have worked way better <laughs> with this. But I digress. Um, I really hope the people involved with this give a shit. I really, honestly do. I hope that this is just not you know a nostalgia cash grab and just like oh let's just whore out this property because you know we're peacock and we'd actually like people to watch something besides the office on our streaming service so i i hope i genuinely hope that people involved in this are are ready to bring it but as far as the chances being good like i i give this a like a 70 percent chance i think this will just royally piss me off and kind of make me hate everything again i hope i'm wrong but i i'm i, I don't think i am i, I think it's gonna be a rough journey i think it's gonna be a rough show to get through but we'll know soon because it comes out uh february 13th uh like i said first three episodes i believe come out so we'll see uh we'll see if we get another trailer before we get to episode uh before we get to the premiere but uh yeah, we'll we'll see. February thirteenth. I I can't believe this happened. <laughs> I can't believe they're doing this. Just uh, oh well. But Bel Air, everyone, give me your thoughts. Um, I can't wait for that Sanford and Son reboot that they're gonna <laughs> that they're gonna do. But uh, yeah, I oh yeah. That, so actually, if you follow me on Twitter, just real quick, I actually made that joke. I was like. <laughs> We cut to a we cut to a junkyard. We see a young we see a young black man jump in front of a bullet for his friend. He looks up and goes, "Dad, I saved you." And his dad goes, "You big old dummy!" And he dies. Sanford's. <laughs> but well, God, watch BT Plus. We'll pick up that shit. But if they do, I want credit. But. Yeah, we'll we'll see how this goes. February thirteenth, I'll watch it. I'll give it a fair shake. If it's great, I will come on mic and talk about. Hey, I was wrong, y'all. Like credit, they pulled this off. But yeah, I'm concerned. But let me know your thoughts on this. I'm curious to hear what people think. Uh, Twitter was very interesting on some of the takes, but. You can follow yours truly on the Twitter at jhunterrealpineapple. You can follow Scott on Twitter at Nearman the First. Don't forget to like both our pages on Facebook at the Real Pineapple. That's R E E L Pineapple and Real Pineapple Games. Don't forget to follow yours truly also on Twitch. You can find me on Twitch at twitch.tv slash jhunterrealpineapple. And don't forget to like and share and subscribe. Uh, most places you listen to podcasts, SoundCloud, Apple and Google Podcasts, Podbean, Stitcher, and iHeartRadio, Spotify, Amazon Music, to name a few, at The Real Pineapple. Thank you so much for listening. We'll have reviews up here soon for The Last Duel, as well as for Drive My Car and The Tragedy of Macbeth. I am so hyped to uh, give all of y'all my thoughts on that. But everyone, thank you so much for listening. Stay safe out there. Wear a mask, get your COVID shot, get your booster if you haven't yet. Take care of each other, and we will talk to you soon.